Hey guys, um, welcome to this video where we will um, start working our way to make our player uh, be able to take cover. Um, this was requested a few times, but was already was also always in my plan to do so. Uh, it's going to be uh, quite uh, intensive, I think, because there's a lot of ground to cover. We need to uh, add the animations for it. We need to uh, modify our animation controller. Uh, we need to find cover and take cover and all that stuff. So it's going to be quite some work. Uh, so it's possible that I will uh, cut this video in a few pieces. Um, okay, so well, let's get started uh, with uh, the way I ended the previous video where I said uh, that I uh, wondered if you were able to come up with something. <clears throat> what I actually meant was that I wonder how you are going to come up with the system. Because uh, when you are working on a game, you just you don't just go diving headfirst in making a cover system or, or something like that. You're gonna you need to think a little bit about what you are trying to achieve, what would be uh, gameplay-wise necessary and, and and such. So I usually walk around with uh, with a concept uh, in my head for a few days, depending on what it is, of course, and then. Um, try to think of stuff that I need to do to get it to get it uh, working without thinking of all the details all the minor details uh, which eventually will be there but you don't really need them when you start out I, I let me try to explain it if you want to go to the grocery store or something to 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 buy stuff you decide if you're going to go by car, by foot, or maybe by with your bicycle. You know, those are three, three options you have, um, and all three uh, will will need you. Uh, if you decide one, you you will need to do other stuff. For instance, if I go walking, I need to check if it's going to rain, and if it's going to rain, am I going to bring a raincoat? But who the, who else who on earth wears a raincoat? You know, so do you really need to? To bring one um, I hope you understand what I'm what I'm trying to say here I mean don't build stuff if you're not really sure if you're going to need it and only build stuff if you're really going to use it I mean and not if you're maybe going to use it okay uh, because maybe it won't even start to rain you know okay um, let's get started with um, with our, with our idea, what I had about taking cover. I mean, you, we all know the games where you are pressing uh, a button and your character will um, uh, magically run into the cover and take and take cover. And this is something that I don't really like for this for this game. I really want our player to uh, let's uh, see here. I really want our player to move towards cover and then maybe press a button so it will take cover. Maybe turn around you know let's uh, let's uh, see it like this so it will take cover and then maybe move uh, sideways and um, um, make it able to um, if we are here um, so we can peek around the corner but it's really something you can do yourself I mean we don't really want to um, let do, let the let the animation do stuff for the player. I mean, it's quite easy for me to take cover here myself and then peek around the corner. Yeah, so I can do it for both ways, Otherwise, but my weapon is a little bit strange here. So we might uh, the camera switch the camera to the different a different side here to the left when we are in cover on this corner. Um, we want to uh, when we cover here we want to be in cover so we can actually see our player and not rotate the camera with us. So we want to get stuck to the uh, to the wall, uh, but keep the camera the way we want. And maybe it would be easy to, when we take cover and we're gonna move sideways, we want to be in line uh, with, with our cover without having to, uh, uh, correct our views and also when we are in cover we don't want to use this camera input yeah so this is basically what we are uh, trying to do so we're gonna walk up to a uh, cover 
and maybe we let our player do whatever he wants himself but if we are in cover here and uh, we press a button and then if we are allowed to take cover we will rotate the, the character of the player around uh, attach it to the to the wall or the object we are behind and then we allow it to move left and right and disable this camera movement and also when we are here we want to switch the camera to the other side uh, we don't uh, switch our weapon to the other side because we are in this well we we're right-handed here so we don't switch it to the left hand um, so we're just going to switch the camera and i think uh, when we have that basically uh, done we are pretty much um, uh, doing what we want yeah okay so let's get started by how to detect our uh, cover so i made this cover thing here uh, maybe lower a little bit just a simple cube and what we need to do we need to when we are moving our player we want to know if we are within distance to take cover and when we when we are in distance we can press a button then it will um, fix it to the uh, to the perpendicular to the to the object and um, play the animation to uh, to rotate the player around um, and get the normal so we can move uh, perpendicular yeah but how can we know um, or how we are detecting if we are in cover you can do it in many ways and I was thinking about uh, using the scanner which we have we could make a layer of this uh, a new a new a new layer which we assign to objects where we want to be able to take cover behind and then take our uh, add a scanner to a player which will try to detect um, try to detect it and then uh, when it detects something well we can then take cover uh, which is a way to do uh, we could also um, create a trigger around the um, coverable object and then when the player enters the trigger we can then allow the player to take cover so that's and but when we do that we still need to make it uh, a ray cast towards the object so we can find out the normal just the way we did with the bullets okay so that was a long talk i hope you understand a little bit what i'm uh, what we are trying to do here um so yeah let's get started so first we're gonna try the um, the method where we are going to um in, uh, take the cover of the uh, let me just uh, call steam set steam off okay so first we're gonna um, use uh, the cover system here for uh, i'm sorry the, the the collider here to with a trigger which allows our player to enter when we are entered we can take cover so what we can do we can uh, scale the the box collider a little bit uh, like uh, like this so this will give us a small amount of room to take cover so we really need to be touching the wall here so maybe a little bit more maybe like this seems to be okay so if you don't want to be able to take cover on on this part you just re reduce the box collider yeah okay um now that i come to think of it we want it to be a trigger uh, so we don't want to we we don't want to use this uh, collider here. So let me just um, reset this, and we're gonna uh, let's call this our uh, cover wall. Just for the testing, let's create a, an empty game object as child. Let's call this um, trigger, and let's add the box collider to it. So we have, and we make this one a trigger, and then we're gonna scale this one. I thought, I thought it had a two, something like that. Yeah, okay, gonna keep it like this. Seems to be okay. Now, uh, let me uh, drag this a little bit here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so now if I hit play, when we walk here, we want to trigger 
maybe it's a little bit too big but when we are walking inside this trigger we want to allow the player to take cover and attach herself to the wall so when we are here we need to rake us towards the uh, closest point where we are hitting uh, the closest point of a, a cast towards the uh, ray cast towards the wall and then get the normal and then align our player directly to the normal and well maybe turn it around 180 degrees but we don't want to swap the camera with him okay so this is what we are going to do so we are first gonna add some um, layer here let's create a new layer let's call this cover and then we're gonna assign this layer to the um, well here it is towards the, to the trigger uh, game object now let's create a new script for our player here let's call this a player cover okay let's assign it to the player like this okay let's open it up okay let me zoom in this a little bit because I noticed it was a little bit small in the in the videos okay okay let's see what are we going to do here um, we also need a script here which detects the uh, which detects the player so this is gonna be a shared script I think we're gonna use this um, we can use it here more let's call this uh, cover maybe you cover trigger or something but and now I I really prefer to use scripts on um, on the main uh, game object instead of childs uh, we did it here but it's uh, for weapons it should be okay because we um, I mean for some for some it's okay but on most cases I really like to uh, use it on a parent instead of that a child game object so whenever you can try uh, so the cover script gonna add it to the cover wall and we're gonna give this uh, a serializable field for our uh, collider now I'm not specifying a box or a sphere collider so we can use any collider and we call this the trigger and then we're gonna assign the trigger here in the script did I save it no there it is so we can drop the trigger here which will tell us it's a box collider so it doesn't really matter which type of collider we are using okay and now we're gonna add the uh, on trigger enter method which takes in the uh, collider of the others transform which is colliding with uh, or maybe entering the trigger let's gonna first just simply say uh, we print out the others name okay now to make um, a collision or maybe a, a trigger occur we need at least one of these components needs to have a rigid body so now we don't want to give the player another rigid body because it has a uh, the the um, what's it called the, uh, the 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 ragdoll already so we're gonna assign a rigid body to the component which is uh, our cover and then we're gonna uncheck use gravity and check is kinematic so it won't be influenced by anything okay so let's hit it let's clear this out because it on start it will uh, trigger uh, more stuff now let's move in there we go now you can see it has detected our uh, a lot of stuff but also our player so we only want to detect our player and um, with everything else we just stop so we're gonna add the um, a check here if other on, uh, dot uh, tag equals to uh, not equals to player we're gonna return so only players are allowed to take cover 
Now, we are here tagging the player with the tag player. If you want to use a different tag, you can create one, but we're gonna use the player here. Okay, so if we are not the player, we're gonna return. Um, otherwise, we're gonna uh, let the player know that we are able to take cover. So we have the player cover here. So we're gonna check here if the, um, we could do like this other uh, game object, get component and then the uh, player cover because we know we are a player, but um, we also have the game manager now to get to get the local player. Now we have to think about the networking we are about, uh, we are going to implement later because we don't want our players to take cover whenever they want, or maybe take cover or do stuff whenever they want. We want the server to sometimes, uh, and most of the time really, um, make the decisions if it's allowed to do. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use the, uh, we're gonna make sure, oh, I'm sure we're not gonna make sure, we're gonna, uh, we're always gonna assume that the on trigger enter is our local player, yeah? So then we are able to request the server later if we are able to take cover and let the server tell us that we can, okay? So now let's, um, for now, just use our local player like this. So we're gonna get our game manager reference and we get the local player, which is our player. Um, we could also check if even better maybe yeah, we, let's do it like this. If uh, other get component player, if this equals to our local player, I'm sorry, if this not equals to our local player, return as well. We are not the local player. Okay. So now we know that we are the local player. So now we can get the um, the local players coverable uh, uh, player cover object. Let's see here, player cover. Get component player cover. Somebody uh, replied in the uh, in the comment section that I was using far from time to time which is, and it was uh, well commented, it's a lazy way of uh, getting uh, variables. So I'm gonna change it to like this, player cover. So now we have our player cover component and then we're gonna tell the player that we are allowed to take cover. Now, let's do this, let's say player cover. Uh, we don't have any method for it, so um, let's make a method, let's call this set uh, player cover allowed and pass in the value. Now, if you hit shift alt F10, you can generate the method uh, automatically in the right class. So press enter, then it created the, the method. Now let's make a on trigger leave uh, other. And we're going to do exactly the same. Now, this is uh, something I don't want to copy this over here uh, because then you have two parts with the same code. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a private method um, returning a bool. Let's call this private bool. Uh, check local local player. And then we're gonna add this part here. And the other will be a collider. And then we're gonna say, um, if check local players, which is not a good uh, check, is local player. And we're gonna add the other component here, the, the method here, variable here. We're gonna return. 
Okay, so now we can uh, return false, return false, return true. Okay, so we're going to return false if this is the case, and otherwise we're going to return true. So we can add more statements here if we want. Okay, now with that said, we're going to do it here again. So if we is check local player is not uh, if let's call this if not local player if is not local player I mean this tells me in 20 years what I'm doing here so okay um, what we need to do, we need to get player cover again. So this is something we can do here too. So let's do this here right away. Player cover. Then we're gonna get the player cover here. And let's do it here. Now I'm wondering again, because if we are saying it's not local player, it doesn't tell me that it wanna get it's gonna going to get the player cover here. So we're gonna make here uh, we need to rename this. So what would be a wise name? Maybe uh, check 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 um, check local player. Hmm. And then not check local player. Hmm. Not really sure. Doesn't really matter for now. I'm gonna keep it like this. I'm, uh, we are going to refactor some way down the line, uh, and then I'm sure we're gonna get this uh, this part again. So check if not check local player. Then we're gonna return. Make sure you check it on both with a not here. Uh, and then we're gonna say here false yeah so if we look at this method here by pressing F12 on the player cover method we're gonna jump right over to the player cover script and then it added our variables and well it doesn't do anything because it's gonna show it's not implemented so so we're gonna say here bool is value uh, let's get rid of this let's make a private bool um, can take cover and maybe a bool is in cover not sure if we're gonna need it um can take cover equals to the value yeah okay so now let's print it out to make sure that what uh, let's make this one we're not gonna make it printed we'll make it public so we can see it in the inspector let it compile so we have hit the bool the checkbox so if we move now it says can take cover ah hmm trigger enter and trigger leave what what's it what's it called on trigger leave on trigger exit maybe you could you can look up in the manual but There we go. So now you can see when we enter cover, it will check on and it will check off when we leave it. So very simple, but uh, exactly what we need. Cool. So now that we are able to take cover, we need to uh, hit a key to actually take to actually uh, when we when we can take cover, we need to get the normal of the wall. Where we are, which we are, where we are standing against, and then align our player uh, perpendicular to the to the wall. So just like I said, let's just like we did with the bullets. When we hit something, we um, we tr do a ray cast and we find out the normal, and then we're gonna add the the we're gonna spawn the bullet at the, at the spot. Um, and this is also what we're going to do with the player. So now let's uh, make um, 
let's see set player cover allowed okay let's make a, a simple test here I mean I always like to test something out uh, quick see if it works or the way it, I want it to work and then make it the way you want it really you want it okay so we need to make our uh, player so let's uh, in the update if can take cover return so if we cannot take cover we are going to skip out the update method and now we're going to check if uh, input get key down or get key up doesn't really matter uh, let's uh, make the um, key code let's take the F key for now so we can now take cover when we hit the or maybe even release the F key here okay so um, if we look at the scanner because we made the scanner previously the scanner um, will it can be detecting the the, uh, the obstacles we are hitting but it won't be returning any hit points I mean uh, uh, yeah hit points where we are hitting so if you look at the scanner we do an overlap sphere which returns an array of colliders but colliders don't have uh, hit info you only get the hit info on uh, let's see array cost here but we don't we don't use the hit in the is in line of sight so what we're gonna do we still are going to use the scanner to get every cover obstacle around us but then we are going to cast a ray around the player and um, all around the player because we can uh, we can be looking straight at the um, object where where we want to take cover which would be quite quite easy but we could also be looking the other way and then we'll need to uh, detect if the let me let me show you if we are looking this way if you look at the uh, the scene here uh, we, and, and we hit the cover button we still want to take cover here but if we look here we want to do it as well so what we need to do we're gonna wrote we're gonna create a raycast around the um, around the player Okay. To do so, let me uh, let's create a, an example here in the update method. So without the um, without if we are pressing the uh, the key uh, the key button or anything, it's just for for showing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make our uh, an angle step here. So we're gonna say how many rays do we want around the player? So let's make a serializable field. Serialize field and let's call it this is an integer uh, number of race yeah so then we make a float angle step so which will be the angle um, we are casting the ray so it's evenly spread which will be 360 like 360 degrees and divided by the number of rays so this will give us an amount you know so then we can simply make a for each loop and loop through the um, number of rays. And then we're gonna, uh, for now we're gonna create an angle, quaternion angle equals to quaternion uh, angle axis, quite convenient, um, will be I times the, uh, let's see, angle step, yeah and then we're going to rotate it around the transforms up you know, we could do the factor three up doesn't doesn't really matter here um okay so now let's cre create a array here a debug uh sorry it should be debug array draw array then we're going to draw array from our transforms position i'm going to add the uh, factor three up times uh, point uh, 0.3f or something so it's a little bit higher than the ground and the direction will be uh, our angle and we're gonna multiply that by factor 3 forward uh, times uh, 5 so the length of the factor will be 5 and let's create a color uh, magenta or something so it stands out a little bit now let's go back to the player 
So we now have the number of rays here. Let's increase this to, uh, to five, maybe. Now, if we look to our, at our player and we're gonna move it uh, forward, there you go. You can see it, it, it's evenly spread five um, rays about 30 centimeters above the ground. Yeah. So if we, um, if we would keep it like this and we would be standing, I mean, it doesn't rotate with us. It doesn't really matter if it rotates with us. But if we stand like this, there we go. Uh, it would still use, probably use this ray here because this will be the closest, the shortest ray uh, around us to align ourselves. Yeah. So let's rotate a little bit more. I mean, if we are standing like this, it will it will go to that ray. Whoops. Sorry. Hope you didn't. Hope it didn't scare you there. Now, if we increase the number of rays, there you go. It will evenly, I mean, if it's an even number to be divided by 360. So if we do 36, you can see how many rays are now checking. Of, they're not doing anything, but we will be creating rays. So this is very high uh, resolution. It, we don't really need this high, maybe 12, maybe even less. I'm not. Yeah. As, as long as it's more than zero, because otherwise it will, it will result in a division by zero. I think seven or, or eight. Eight seems to be very nice. Looks nice as well. So we have, I'm gonna keep it at eight. Yeah, so we're gonna use this eight. So uh, basically it doesn't rotate with us, but if the obstacle itself is uh, rotated differently, like this, we would still, if we were standing, we're standing here, it would align itself to this, get the normal, and it would be straight up here so we can move along this line, yeah? Okay, so, um, we don't need this take cover uh, 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 field here public, so let's make this private again. Okay, so now what we need to do, when we uh, are releasing the key up, Maybe it's better to uh, key down. So if we are pressing key down, we need to uh, get one of these angles here, find the normal, and then, there we go, and then align itself to it. And to do that, we're gonna do uh, almost something like this. Um, we are going to test out the, um, we're gonna ray cast on all these angles here, and then we're gonna find the closest one and then we're gonna to align to it, yeah. So first, uh, we only want to detect certain uh, layers, which will be the cover layer. So let's make a layer mask. Let's call this a cover mask. And then we're gonna say here, if physics, uh, sorry, if physics ray cost, and then we're gonna create, uh, let's see, I'm gonna use this one. So let's first create a ray cost hit variable here. Hit. And then we're gonna, uh, from the, I'm gonna use this one, from the origin will be our transforms position. And we add the factor three up times 0.3 F, like it's 30 uh, centimeters uh, up. Uh, in what direction? We're going to use the direction of our, um, let's see, angle times factor three forward. Okay, and then we're going to out uh, the hit. And of course, the layer mask, so it's the cover mask. Um, and times uh, five. So it's, it's, it's five meters, it's way too much, but let's keep it at five right now. So this will return uh, a true or false Boolean, as you can see. So if we are here, we can, um, well, let's create a debug draw line. Uh, I'm gonna use a debug draw line because it, I can give it uh, an overload which has some duration, so it can show it for an amount of time. 
So we're going to uh, draw a line from our transforms position, factor 3 up times 0.3f. And the angle, I'm sorry, the end will be angle times factor, of, no, I'm sorry, it will be the hit, uh, hit info, hit point. And the color will be uh, color uh, magento, magenta for uh, 0.5 seconds. Okay, let's get rid of uh, this. Oh, wait, I see uh, one mistake here. Um, I'm putting the length here, which is wrong, because we want to use the overload. Um, this one. So with the, the number 11, which will be the origin, the, which is the uh, position uh, and add the 30 centimeters, then the direction, the angle with the factor 3 forward, and then our maximum distance. So let's set it at uh, 5, and then comes our, uh, I'm saying 11, but I'm not really sure. No, it's going to be this one, out hit, and then it will give our distance. So let's put it at 5. And then our cover mask. Okay. So now uh, let's add the uh, layer here. So select the cover wall and assign it again, but okay. Uh, you don't need to change the uh, children. It doesn't, it, it's not wrong if you do so, but we don't need to. Okay, now back to the player and then select the cover mask. So we only want to uh, cast uh, against object with the with the with the layer ma with the layer of cover. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens now if we run this. So we move forward and we press F. Now you can see you can see it's it's only detecting this part. Yeah. So now you can also see that this is the shortest, the shortest uh, one is this one. So we're probably going to hit with this uh, line with this one, with this hit. Now let's, uh, let's duplicate this one just to, just to test this out. Rotate it around a little bit, make sure it's not entirely uh, straight and see if we now press F you can see it will align right here okay so we don't need to rotate the uh, the ray cast around our player with our with our player's rotation it will work like this okay so now uh, let's see I thought I saw it here at five I thought eight was pretty good only ray five rays so it's not very uh, difficult okay and so now we need to get the um, closest one in this uh, the closest one uh, of our hits so what we're going to do we're going to create a private um, uh, it's going to be uh, let's see let's make a, a ray cost hit here private ray cost hit closest hit And we are going to use this uh, closest hit right here. So if we are hitting something, we're gonna check if the closest hit, uh, if closest hit distance, because by default, uh, the closest hit, this one, will be zero. Closest hit will always be, will always have a value because it's a struct. So if it's zero, then we want to assign it or we want to assign the closest hit when the sorry when the hit dot distance is less than our current closest hit distance yeah so then we're gonna say closest hit equals to hit then we're gonna um, this should say point let's cut this out here now when we are done with our for loop we're gonna say draw a line and we're gonna draw our closest hit point okay so um, this should be doing what we want 
So I move forward, press F, and you can see only one small magenta line appearing. And then we're going to move it behind him and maybe even rotate it a little bit. Let's move down there. Now if we hit F, I saw something strange here. Let's see. Oh, I think I know what's wrong. Let's do it again. Uh, you can see it's still going to the old spot. Uh, this is because we are checking for the closest distance and we probably need to reset it. So we can say here when we are pressing the key, closest hit equals to a new uh, Raycast hit. So it's a new. Uh, can we go here? You see, it's a new struct. So we're only going to reset all the values from the struct. So let's give it another try. Okay, this works the way we want. Now, oops, don't rotate it like that, just like this. Somewhere here. Well, you get the point, but you can see it's perfectly aligning to the, uh, uh, to the closest point where we want. Although we are ray casting all around us, we, we will always be able to get the closest point of our cover. Cool. Um, what's next? Next will be aligning our player to the normal. So now we have the normal in our closest hit. We, we need to align our player to it. So let's first take a look here if we uh, can tidy this up a little bit. Like I said, we... Because if I look at this right now, it's very easy to understand what we are doing. But if we are looking at this in, in three months, we really need to uh, go over it to make sure uh, to see what, what's going on. So maybe if we get uh, press control R and then M to create a new method, let's call this, uh, um, hmm, what are we doing? We are uh, casting rays around us, find cover around player. Yeah. We are now calling it player. Yeah, it's a player cover, it's okay. So now we are looping here. Uh, maybe even um, extract this one and maybe uh, check closest uh, point. Okay. If you want, you can also give this more uh, information, but I usually try to keep my private methods uh, self-explanatory and public methods you can assign for, um, assign with, uh, with the comments. But this will tell me more. Find cover on play when I press F. Then I can understand this. And then it will say check closest point. Closest, closest point. And then it will do a transform. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay for now. So, um, aligning to the closest hit. So now here we can assume we have, we, we could try and check if closest hit uh, distance, if that equals to zero, we could um, return. So we can assume we don't have any anything hit. Just fail saving here. And now we could get the, uh, let's look at the projectile, where we are getting the look rotation of the normal and we rotated it uh, 180 degrees. Let's just copy this over and do it exactly the same. Then we're going to say transform position equals, uh, sorry, rotation, of course. I don't think we need this one, but because the animation will be uh, 180 degrees around as well, I think. 
but just see what happens. There we go. So what you could what you could see if I press F now, whoops, I need to press F with the game window selected. So I press F. Now you can see it moving. So if I only move left and right and don't touch the mouse, it should actually unless I'm mistaken. I'm not really sure if it's I think it is. If you don't touch the mouse when you're it's pretty hard to see. Let's see it from here. See it's moving, yeah. So if you don't touch the mouse it will move like this. Yeah. So let's turn a little bit more, press F. There we go. Okay, so it's perfectly aligning towards the uh, towards the um, cover object. So let's again test this out with a, a curved one, or I mean at an angle. So like this, press F. It turns around, and I can just don't touch your mouse when you're. I think this works. Let's move far away. Okay. Yeah, otherwise it will collide, you know, like this. So I move forward a little bit. Oops. Let's try this side. Should be doing exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. So now you can see we are rotating 180 degrees. Let's uh, get rid of it. Let's see what happens. Because now it will, uh, yeah, now it will rotate like this. And actually, we need it to rotate 180 degrees because the animation we are using will be rotated. So keep this, um, keep this here. Okay. So we need to um, remember that we need to uh, prevent the. Uh, player to use his mouse. I mean, I, he can use his mouse, but we don't want to rotate the the player's legs when we are doing this. So we want to do something else with the rotation here. But aligning works pretty good. Um, so yeah, next thing we'll be um, gluing ourselves to the um, to this part so we cannot skip out I mean right now we can move all the way here but well, let's see do we want to stop here maybe if I hold my mouse I want to stop if I then I, I'm sorry if I move my keys I want to stop here before going out yeah but that's something we can do uh, later on uh, so next we'll be um, setting our animation And, and we are going to use this uh, closest hit right here. So if we are hitting something, we're going to check if the closest hit, uh, if closest hit distance, because by default, uh, the closest hit, this one, will be zero. Closest hit will always be, will always have a value because it's a struct. So if it's zero, then we want to assign it. Or we want to assign the closest hit when the sorry when the hit dot distance is less than our current closest hit distance. Yeah. So then we're gonna say closest hit equals to hit. Then we're gonna um, this should say point. Let's cut this out here. Now when we are done with our for loop we're gonna say draw a line and we're gonna draw our closest hit point okay so um, this should be doing what we want so I move forward press F and you can see only one small magenta line appearing 
And then we're going to move it behind him and maybe even rotate it a little bit. Let's move down there. Now if we hit F, I saw something strange here. Let's see. Oh, I think I know what's wrong. Let's do it again. Uh, you can see it's still going to the old spot. Uh, this is because we are checking for the closest distance and we probably need to reset it. So we can say here when we are pressing the key, closest hit equals to a new uh, Raycast hit. So it's a new, can okay, we go here? You see, it's a new struct. So we only gonna reset all the values from the struct. So let's give it another try. Okay, this works the way we want. Now, oops, don't rotate it like that, just like this. Somewhere here. Well, you get the point, but you can see it's perfectly aligning to the, uh, uh, to the closest point where we want. Although we are ray casting all around us, we, we will always be able to get the closest point of our cover. Cool. Um, what's next? Next will be aligning our player to the normal. So now we have the normal in our closest hit. We, we need to align our player to it. So let's first take a look here if we uh, can tidy this up a little bit. Like I said, we because if I look at this right now, it's very easy to understand what we are doing. But if we are looking at this in, in three months, we really need to uh, go over it to make sure uh, to see what, what's going on. So maybe if we get uh, press control R and then M to create a new method, let's call this, uh, um, hmm, what are we doing? We are uh, casting rays around us, find cover around player. Yeah. We are now calling it player. Yeah, it's a player cover, it's okay. So now we are looping here. Uh, maybe even um, extract this one and maybe uh, check closest uh, point. Okay. If you want, you can also give this more uh, information, but I usually try to keep my private methods uh, self explanatory and public methods you can assign for, um, assign with, uh, with the comments. But this will tell me more. Find cover on play when I press F. Then I can understand this. And then we'll say check closest point. Closest, closest point, and then it will do a transform. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay for now. So um, aligning to the closest hit. So now here we can assume we have. We we could try and check if closest hit uh, distance if that equals to zero, we could um, return. So we can assume we don't have any anything hit, just fill saving here. And now we could get the, uh, let's look at the projectile, where we are getting the look rotation of the normal and we rotated it uh, 180 degrees. Let's just copy this over and do it exactly the same. Then we're going to say transform position equals, uh, sorry, rotation, of course. I don't think we need this one, but because the animation will be uh, 180 degrees around as well, I think. But just see what happens. There we go. So what you could 
what you could see if I press F now whoops I need to press F with the game window selected so I press F then you can see it moving so if I only move left and right and don't touch the mouse it should actually unless I'm mistaken I'm not really sure if it's I think it is if you don't touch the mouse when you're it's pretty hard to see let's see it from here see it's moving yeah so if you don't touch the mouse it will move like this yeah so let's turn a little bit more press F there we go okay so it's perfectly aligning towards the uh, towards the um, cover object so let's again test this out with a, a curved one or I mean at an angle so like this press F it turns around and I can just don't touch your mouse when you're I think this works let's move far away okay yeah otherwise it will collide you know like this so I move forward a little bit oops let's try this side should be doing exactly the same yeah okay so now you can see we are rotating 180 degrees let's uh, get rid of it and see what happens because now it will uh, yeah now it will rotate like this now actually we needed to rotate 180 degrees because the animation we are using will be rotated so keep this um, keep this here okay so we need to um, remember that we need to uh, prevent the uh, player to use his mouse I mean I, he can use his mouse but we don't want to rotate the, the players legs when we are doing this so we want to do something else with the rotation here but aligning works pretty good um, so yeah next thing will be um, gluing ourselves to the um, to this part so we cannot skip out I mean right now we can move all the way here but well, let's see do we want to stop here maybe if I hold my mouse I want to stop if I then I, I'm sorry if I move my keys I want to stop here before going out yeah but that's something we can do uh, later on uh, so next we'll be um, setting our animation So that works pretty well. Uh, what we now want to do is uh, create our animation. So when we are standing here and we hit F, that it uh, turns our player around, keeps the camera the way we have it. Um, yeah, that's the next thing we're gonna do.